Hello and welcome to Die Rollin. I'm the ever excitable Adam, and today I'm unboxing the Sons of Shirax. Explore it. So this is the third game in the Hexmore season uh, series. Um, we've had an undead king. We've had a hypnotic elf. This time around, we've got this big chap, a absolute sheave sandworm. So straight off the back of watching June, this is going to be on everyone's list of things to play. Um, you always get a ton of stuff in these games. Um, the Ravager has returned, so we're going to be fighting off against a Ravager this time around. Um, and, well, hopefully we'll survive. But this time we're out in the desert. Previously, we've been out in the kind of very typical fantasy realm. And then we've been in some forest-heavy stuff. We're in the desert this time. And next time we're going to go to a really creepy kind of gothic uh, folklorian background as well. So, um, yeah, they do like to change the themes up a bit, which is pretty great. Okay, what we got on the inside here? Uh, we'll place the volume of punch boards underneath the plastic inserts. Good to know. So you always get a really cool um, kind of backdrop um, to basically put on your. You can put this on your table. Um, so this is this is at the end of your table, and you're like, oh, that looks pretty cool. And they always give you an idea of what the next one entails. So our next one being domain of Mesa Noctis. But yeah, when you've got lovely artwork like that, it's nice to show it off. And now I actually unboxed this one after I unbox number four. So um, anything I see in this uh, might not be a surprise, but it might be, we'll see. Okay, so I've got to get this out straight away. Look at that Reaper miniature of a huge sandworm. Uh, if you have a copy of June, you might want to grab this out and just put it on the board uh, just to help <laughs> uh, really show how big the sandworms are. So let's start with the rule book. And this is what was missing from this is what was missing from the Domain of Mesonoctis. I did not see this in there. A storybook. The storybook in the other ones were fantastic because they have like, every time you meet one of these creatures, you can read these things out. When you go to these places and discover stuff, you have these things. I did not see this in the, in the, uh, in the Domain of Mesonoctis, which I feel is actually a bit of a detraction, really. But yeah, it's not listed on the components for... Um, Mosinoctis. So that's a shame because I really enjoy these storybooks. They really help immerse you. But I guess when you're playing a game that's going to be two to three hours long, you might not want to um, have to read all this stuff as well. Uh, but they do give you some really good, um, like, kind of scenario setting. So when you face this thing, you read this out. And if you defeat it, you read this out. Um, and it really helps immerse you. And these games are very immersive. Uh, so we've got a rule book. This is a um, fairly kind of small rule book, really. But um, you've got a lot of stuff to read in this. Um, yeah, so you're looking at nearly a nearly a hundred pages of um, of rules to get through there. But um, it's not huge, big pages. They're fairly fairly simple going. Uh, we've got some play styles in here as well. So it tells you how you can. So this is pretty cool. It tells you how you can basically mix up. Uh, Valley of the Dead King with Sons of Shurax and look you've got different components from different parts of the game um, but yeah it basically shows you how you can meld these things together so we might be covering that on channel we might be uh, having a couple of games where we, we cross over Sons of Shurax with one of them and the Domain of Mers and Noctis with another and we'll see how they play out and how differently they play out so we got our dry erase markers in here which are if you're going to have boards which you have to write on please can Please have these in there. Um, I know when I was unboxing Core Space Firstborn, you got these kind of boards to use, but they do not give you pens. It makes no sense. Why would you do that? So, what races do we have in this? So, we got Nemsneez, Terrian, Drian, Boron, Half Orc, Hobgoblin, Doonborn, Volcanus, Half Jim, Sleep, Slipid, and a Mutant. And they always give you a little description about what these creatures are, in case you don't know what a sleep is, for instance. Um, where are the humans? Where are the elves? Where are the dwarves? Well, my friends, they're in Volume 1 and Volume 2, so you have to pick those up to get all the different races. But, I mean, you've got just loads of races here. If you add that with one of the other ones, you've got double the races and also double the classes. And you just have so many options. They, they really give you so many options in this game uh, series. It's fantastic. So let's take a look at the different, um, different balls we've got here. So we've got the Whipmaster, this is a class. They always give you really cool artwork of the, um, the class on the back. 
uh, the defilest Scion, the Commander, the Templar, the Gladiator, the Gambler, the Merchant, the Artificer, and the Assassin. And we've got the battle map there, the old trusty battle map that we're aware of. We've seen other stuff, and you'll be writing down all the enemies you're fighting and tracking the damage and stuff you're doing on here, as well as some stuff about the quest as well, the, the general mission you're going through. Oh, we also have the Dervish. Okay, then we've got a couple of things about the cities here. So we've got Ferora, the free city of knowledge, the great market of Drea. These are the different things you can do in here as well. Uh, then we have a level 9 monster, Zim the Phoenix. Uh, opponent mutations. Because you can mutate in this game, I believe. Uh, we've got Magnus Grimm and Hilen Kigne, the Chaos Bearer. I'm going to need some help pronouncing some of these. We've got Glass Golem and Am Hinak, the Mummy. Amonzu, the Scorpion King. The twin. I'm going to have to play as Alex. He is a huge fan of the Mummy, so this is going to be right as Alex. Uh, Enormous Pangolin and uh, Cricket. There's also scarabs in this game. Not quite sure what they do yet until I've read the rules. And uh, we've got a bazaar there as well. Scarabs. There's also an arena you can probably fight in. And uh, some more stuff about bazaar there. The Scorched Lands of Tari. And the Gambling Den of Nemesiant. We've got the game turns over here. And then on the other side, we have a double board for... The Ravager. This is the main beast you're going to be fighting. So you do all the different things in here and then have to face off against that. Uh, the other two games um, I played with this, you have to basically level up your character so the point that the Dead King is ready to fight you, you are you're ready to kill him. Same as the, uh, the Hypnotist Elf. So we've got our hero party there. And we've got this. Maybe this is the Bazaar guy. I don't know, but he's going to be moving around the board. Obviously, we've got that. And there is also a base for him as well. The Ravager. So he goes in like that. Fantastic. Okay, uh, let's. We got a bunch of baggies here. Dice. Let's talk about dice. So you always get a navigate one. You always get an explore dice, and you always get. Sorry, navigate. <laughs> navigate, explore, and survival. There, you always get these dice in there. And you also get your hex floor dice, which always has the hex on the six. But I've not seen a D4 in an orange variety, or a black D4, or a brown D4, whatever that is. So, um, then you. Uh, let's take a look at the power up deck. So, for Mersin Noctis, they changed the artwork, they made it look fantastic. This time it's still the kind of same basic kind of artwork you get in the original uh, two games. But you know what? That's that's perfectly fine uh, because they tell you everything you need to know. The artwork is nice, but um, yeah, it's not specific. It's, it's not necessary. So we've got all of those. Cool. Okay, so there'll be upgrades we're going to be using. We've got our circumstance deck. So these are going to be events and other discoveries and things you may own up against, bad guys as well. And um, this one is how they're normally uh, kind of shown. Um, in the domain of Mersa Noctis, they actually have artwork on them. Um, but yeah, do you know what? It's, it's, like I say, though, it's perfectly fine, though. Um, this, this holds in line with the rest of the series. And regardless of what you can or cannot see on here, the, the actual text on here is really, like, immersive. You really do feel like you're up against these creatures or these situations. We've got a mission deck. Now, what's really cool about that is we have different missions for different cities. So excavations, aids, jaw, explores, aids, bounties. Lots of different things you could want to do when you're playing a game. Next, we've got our 
a mutation deck and caravan event deck. So mutation is something that can happen to your characters, I believe, and it kind of changes uh, your character as the game goes on. So this is something I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays out. So talons, razor sharp claws emerge from your fingertips. When using an attack action, you deal an addition four piercing health damage. Each copy you possess adds four to this damage. Scales, your skin hardens and grows into layers of thick, flexible scales. You gain block three. Real stack by the looks of it. Frost, you turn an intense cold through your fingertips. When using your attack action, you may deal additional eight piercing energy damage. Wow, see all these different mutations that can happen to your character. Which, um, yeah, you can't have that in any, you don't have that in any of the games. That is something new to this. But, you know, if you're going to chuck this in, this Sands of Turek, in with, like, Domain of uh, Mesonautis or Valley of the Dead King, then um, you're going to be able to use mutations that, I imagine. And then our Caravan deck here. We have a bunch of Caravan event cards. Sandstorms, Endless Dunes, Calm Journeys. All looks pretty great. So the boards themselves. So we've got like a black pyramid there, some really cool like kind of crystal-y things. I'm sure it all makes sense when I'm actually playing uh, the game. All of these bits. So these extensional, uh, you can put these to extend your bar width as well, apparently. Um, then we've got these boards all go at the bottom. An oasis there. Um, so yeah, lots of really cool artwork on these. I'm really looking forward to I love sand, sand kind of locations. So, um, and this is the main kind of locations you're going to start off with. Um, and yeah, fantastic. So that's everything you get inside a box of the Sand of Shirax, uh, Hexport Volume 3. Um, if you like this video, then please stay tuned to my channel because we will be filming all of this in its entirety. I will probably get somebody else to do it with me. And because these take two to three hours to play through, I will probably break it up into a couple of different videos and we'll tell you how we're feeling about the game as we go on. Uh, so that won't be too long in the distant future. So stay tuned to the channel where we'll be covering that uh, not too far. So. If you want to know about the, these games we're playing or you want to see any other games, then please like and subscribe to our YouTube. Um, and yeah, you'll know about these uh, things. You'll get notifications and you can always comment below if you have any questions. If there's any specific classes or race combinations you want us to try out, um, then please let me know. And I will set that up for you guys because we create this content for you guys to see new games you might not have seen before or games you might be interested in and want to find out a bit more about it. So um, yeah, let me know and I will do that for you. I've been the ever-excited Paladin. Until next time, stay safe or die rolling.